we are uh, having uh, what we call uh, layered reality so we can the 5G showcase. This is really the outcome of the DCMS uh, phase zero project, the university networks. Now, our decision from the very beginning was not to keep the testbed in our lab, but to take it out in the public. We actually built it, our testbed, in the Millennium Square, which is the central square here at Bristol. And we built a testbed which uh, follows a true 5G architecture. Uh, it's, a very, it's, it's a truly heterogeneous network. So it has uh, elements of 5G in your radio. For instance, we are demonstrating here, it's part of our network, 26 gigahertz millimeter wave. Uh, we are demonstrating 3.5 gigahertz massive MIMO and also 28 gigahertz uh, radio. But our network includes also legacy and we have uh, LTE Advance working at 2.6 gigahertz and also we have two different flavors of uh, high performance Wi-Fi. Looking at the future, indoors we also have a Li-Fi. And uh, so, so we put the whole network together, lots of radio, and we connected all this radio via fiber. One of the things that we're demonstrating here, and it's not so visible, is pure convergence of wireless infrastructure with fiber infrastructure. So we have a virtual reality synchronized dance, which you are going to see in the square, which brings a group of people uh, receiving with uh, having a, a collective virtual reality experience uh, very high capacity per person, very high capacity drawn from our network collectively, but also is the issue of synchronization. We try to get these people to complete a task at the same time. The second experience that we are having, we are calling it Millennium Square. And it's a tour of the Millennium Square where the whole thing is happening in the future. So again, a group of people with devices, augmented reality devices, so where they're having a, an image of the square now, we're having a storyteller that actually starts describing how the square is going to look in the future. An animator is part of the whole experience and actually the animator draws real time the different suggestions. So what we are trying with this, what we're demonstrating is really very low latency. And then in the evening we are having a spectacular visualization of our network. So Watercell has commissioned an artist uh, that actually converts our uh, water pools in the square into a water screen and uh, uh, visualizing real time the data from the network uh, with a Cosmos theme. So that's uh, really visually is spectacular, but also is interactive. So when we say 5G in a box, we are trying to provide a box that actually has both the compute, storage and the network in, all together in, in the same place for emerging 5G applications. This is something we developed in the university from scratch uh, using uh, open hardware. 5G is actually evolving, so you don't have sort of a fixed standard for 5G yet. So when you want to include more functions, then uh, these uh, chips enable you to reprogram, so add certain functionalities, remove certain functionalities. We are trying to have a smart and safe city. The goal is to try to detect the suspicious activity along of the city. And this example for live stream, we are trying to do detections criminals along of the city. The each bike rider, we have the uh, 360 degree camera that capture the live stream video along of the city where the bike rider is, is, is riding the bike. And then uh, we have a Raspberry Pi that get this live stream and send to the cloud or to the edge of the networking. We virtualize a function of the networking that is the video transcoder. And this video transcoder, we combine this virtual function video transcoder with a machine learning technique where we are able to do, for example, face detections. Once we are able to do, the, to do face detections, we are trying to, go, to do the face recognitions. We are here to showing up the 5G network system, test system, and uh, what is the uh, bandwidth, what is the latency. 28 gigahertz is, is what we were using, and the link speed is now two times 100 meg. 2CC configuration because of the license, uh, the only what we have is 2CC, and we are transmitting the 2CC 100 megahertz the bandwidth and uh, totally 200 megahertz, and um, the, the bandwidth with what we get currently is 720 uh, on the application level. So outside we've got a vehicle 
on the roof there is a LiDAR. Here we are showing um, how this information can be shared be between vehicles. So for that information to be uh, useful for another vehicle, it needs to be transmitted extremely quickly. We're talking about one, two milliseconds. And if you add uh, the fact that the, actually those systems have a dynamic topology, what I mean by that is cars naturally drive, they move around, so those links are formed only for split seconds and then they move away. Um, so you don't have a time to, for this link to be properly established as a current systems would do it. So for example, Wi-Fi has a, what's called association period. You know, you, when you switch on your uh, laptop, it takes a few seconds before the transmission is established. This will not work for the cars, because few seconds, that means the car is already gone. So we need to send literally a burst of information, one packet, and the receiver needs to make a split second decision. Can it trust this information? What is actually contained? And, uh, and then make a decision about this. The 5G UK exchange is a software solution that uh, plays the role of uh, the multi-domain orchestrator. We consider that its uh, a 5G network is uh, individually orchestrated uh, by a manual layer and uh, each, uh, each of, uh, of these uh, networks expose their network service catalogs. For example, in a, in a one uh, 5G network, a, a security use case might be, uh, let's say, the best that this network can, uh, can offer, that might consist by a virtual uh, firewall, uh, a virtual uh, proxy server, uh, everything running in software based on uh, um, the concepts of uh, uh, software-defined networking and uh, network function virtualization uh, and orchestrated within the individual island by a management and uh, orchestration solution. The University of Bristol is looking at the application of massive MIMO technology for sub-6 gigahertz um, future generation wireless, such as 5G. Using the spatial multiplexing capability of massive MIMO, we can have, in our illustration, 12 users using the same spectral resource and same time resource that one user would occupy in 4G. The equipment here in this lower marquee um, is based on software programmable radios and we're using a laptop as the interface. The array facet that we're showing that is 128 antennas in a 4x32 arrangement but each antenna is also dual polarized. Well, most of the RF electronics would be integrated on the back of the antenna assembly, which would probably collapse down to only a, a half of one of the 19-inch racks that we're looking in the suite of four that we've got here today. Zeta Networks is a spin-out company from uh, University of Bristol. What we are uh, offering here is uh, our product called Network Operating System, which manages the whole of the 5G testbed, which is running the, all the applications and the demonstrations today. So as part of our offering, what we are actually doing is providing slices. The slice, a network slice that spans across the radio access networks, the network switches and the application resources. So each one of them gets their own uh, quality of service, their own quality of experience for their applications. So what you see behind me is um, uh, the demonstration of the 5G testbed. So what we are showing you is the actual network that has all the networking resources like the radio heads, the network switches, but also the application devices that are using them. And what this gives you is from a networking angle how networks are changing and how it's adapting according to the applications. And the public are already questioning, why do I need 5G when actually I cannot have 4G or even 3G connectivity? We would like to say that this is an investment worth, worth doing especially people are looking at public investments at the time of austerity, the question is hard. But the thing is that once we have 5G, one of the things that we are going to achieve is filling those gaps of connectivity. 5G is not about new radio, it's about an architecture, it's a, it's a network of networks. It's going to use everything that is there. It's going to support very high density in city centers like this one, but actually it's going to give more, more benefit when we are going outside in rural environment, you know, during our transport. And I think that once this is being explained, then uh, you get a bigger public acceptance in terms of the spending. But also the other thing, we would like to make it fun and that's what we are making it. And we would like people to experience and say, okay, 
really is going to be fun to have this new network. At the same time, it's going to solve also our day-to-day -day problems of connectivity.